Sharp Customs. We are rolling. We're rolling. It's a Tuesday night. We're giving you some more content. Wanted to do one last night. Uh, things just didn't pan out. It happens, you know. Stuff gets in the way. But hey, man, here I am. I'm right here, right in front of you. And. Bang! <laughs> Caught ya! Caught ya! Caught me. We're going to talk a little bit about this uh, chassis. Check this out. It's a roller. Look at that. She's a roller, baby. Alright. Let's, uh, let's get into it. You've seen the rear end. You've seen the ladder bars that I created. So we've got the, uh, I haven't done any suspension work yet. Uh, I gotta find some shocks. Uh, I don't have any, so I'm gonna go sniff the uh, internet and I'm gonna try and find something. I, I actually, actually, I think I have a pretty good source. Let's see. Let's see, let's move the welder. Oh, 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 let's move the welder. I got this sticker. I got this sticker on the side of my box here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you recognize those. Right here. Don't know if I can turn it. Right there. Bilstein. Yeah, they do miniature shock absorbers. I did not know that. Actually, went on their site and they do like, uh, you know, 50 millimeter, 60 millimeter, 70 millimeter, 90 millimeter, you know, whatever you want. And uh, they're actually a pretty decent price. I did not know that, you know, I bought their shocks for my real vehicles. And I did not know that, yes, they carry stuff that will work perfect for the quarter scale because like I was saying, uh, with this, I want to keep the suspension low and tight. You know, I want maybe, oh, I don't know, I'm thinking, you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch of uh, movement back here. I want to keep this frame. It's already sitting low. I would love to run it right where it is sitting. Because it's low, I can actually drop the body down over the frame a wee bit. Um, I think it's looking, it's looking, it's looking pretty bitching. Uh, here, we're going to zoom in. I did a bunch of work on the front. So I did this I-beam, aluminum. It's a little, little wider than I wanted to go. But I was do I basically I was casting them in sand. I was doing the uh, base. I was doing them uh, a half an inch with styrofoam, and I, I I did a couple. They they didn't turn out, and I so I clamped them in the vise and I kind of just hit them. I hit them. I wish I had one, but I melted. I melted the last one down today to make rear wheel hubs, uh, you know, for the new rear tires, 20, 24 millimeter hex, still got to machine them, drill them, tap them, uh, size them for the axle. We're going to stick these wheels on there just so you can see what they look like. Not right away, but uh, poured these. Actually used a coal forge, believe it or not. Not propane. Normally I, uh, so when I did the straight axle, so I did six of them. I burned through probably a half a tank of propane and it was, trust me, it was pissing me off. I did one, didn't work out. I did the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. They didn't work out. I got close. I got close. And then I realized that... Uh, so 
So basically, I said it once, maybe twice. <laughs> what I was doing was creating the straight axle out of styrofoam. And then I would put my vent tubes, glue them on. I put my filler in the middle. And what I noticed was, I, I wish I could... I wish I could show you with the sand, and maybe I will do another video, because uh, I'd like to make a few more, and I'll show you in another video how gravity works when you're pouring aluminum. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, might evade a lot of people, but when I did my fifth one, and I almost got the full pour, except for one of the ends where the spindle mounts, I didn't quite get the block. I didn't quite, here I'll lift this up, so I didn't quite get the square block. I kind of got it roundish. And uh, so if you look at this flat in the sand, I had a vent, a vent, a vent, a vent, and then my pour was in the middle. And I was using just a very, maybe an inch and a half round piece of tubing as my flask to pour the aluminum in. And it didn't quite get there. The flask was kind of overflowing. So then I went with a taller flask when I did this one. And I decided because they were breaking, you know, I could just put that straight axle in the vise and smack it with my hand and break the sucker in half, I was like, hmm, I think I'm going to go a little bit wider. I will keep the profile this way because as you can see, I, uh, there's 21 holes. 21 holes that I drilled in this straight axle with a small bit and then I went to a 250 quarter inch and then I chamfered every hole both sides. That is 84 times I hit those holes and then of course machined, drilled out uh, two holes. The, I, I adapted these little legs as you can see these little legs right here and that's for that's that's for my my wishbones. I, I made those today. Little wishbones that bolt onto the back of the uh, you know, as you can see, there's still a little bit of pitting in the aluminum. Uh, I probably won't get all of that out. Um, it's a lot of filing. It's a lot of sanding. I also created my spindles uh, in kind of a one-piece format with the dog leg that comes out for your, you know, I don't know what you call it. Your control arm. Uh, I just I ran this bar across with some rod ends or heim joints, whatever you want to call them, uh, just to keep it somewhat aligned. I think I could put a tab on here, you know, servo out the motor to it. It articulates in and out a wee bit with the steering, but you could you could probably put a tab on here and make it a little bit slotted so that you know because your servo arms always it articulates you know it arcs let's just say so it's going to move kind of in and out a wee bit but uh, you know these these things these things are toys these things are toys okay big boy toys and I always put that out there because they're big boy toys and it's like the servo, the servo's doing the job of the steering. Now I put a lot of, I put a lot of angle, uh, I don't know if the camera can catch it, but I did put a lot of back angle in the straight axle and I always do that because um, it helps with the steering, it helps with the steering and I kind of learned that working on real, uh, you know, uh, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 hot rods that if you, you know, 
uh, you know, the go-to is six degrees. Six degrees angle. So if I lift that, you can see the way it pitches. We're not going that high. I got a block of wood in here. I got a block of wood in here, and that's kind of... I might go just a tiny bit more with the leaf spring. I still got to create a leaf spring. And I will probably do the end loops with my full size leaf with a piece of sheet metal and then I'll do like I did on the other 34 I will use a sawzall blade and I will cut it because that, that thing worked great the sawzall blade that thing was great it's spring steel it's spring steel and it's not like this car is going to be going off-roading 4 by 4 or anything like that uh, it's going to scrape asphalt. That's what I want it to do. I want it to scrape the asphalt. You know, hits a dip, scrapes the asphalt. That's what I want it to do. Low and mean looking. And, uh, yeah, so there you have it. You get to see uh, the I-beam I created. I would like to do some more. I'm definitely going to show how I do a styrofoam layup and put it in the sand as a uh, lost foam. That's what they call it, lost foam. And, but like I say, that one, six tries. Six tries, probably half a tank of uh, propane, you know, to, to finally get one. Even this one, after I poured it uh, two days ago, I didn't see the aluminum come up, uh, the, the, the vent holes on one side and I was like ah crap you know another another failure and that's it I'm done I'm done I thought I'll get I'll get myself a, a piece of half inch chunk of aluminum and I'll hand cut it somehow on my bandsaw or you know into what I want and when I dumped it out of the sand lo and behold it was all there it was all there now Yes, like I say, I'm going to do a video so I can show you that because it's, it's, I find pouring hot molten aluminum into making parts, I just find it so cool. Like I made my, uh, like I say, the, the spindles, the spindles were, you know, making a piece of channel like that in the styrofoam, you know, e easy peasy, but I had to put this little dog leg on it, which was actually glued on. That was a separate little piece of styrofoam cut and glued to the big chunk, you know, and then it was like, well, how do I pour these, you know, and I had to kind of stand them upright with the dog leg sticking upward, and then I had another piece of styrofoam glued this way, and I could put them together so I could pour them both at the same time. It was actually kind of cool. And they, and hey, they, they worked. You know, they're, they're there. They're functional. They're on there. You know, the steering, now I have not. I do plan on putting uh, bronze or brass bushings where these bolts are. And underneath the bottom where most of the weight's going to be, probably just be a washer, copper, bronze washer of some sort put some grease on it and it, it, it'll be fine you know these are these are quarter scale toys that I like to run I'm building this one for myself I poured like I said I poured two of my my 24 millimeter hex slugs uh, because these axles these axles right now I got my primals on here they're a half inch, they're a half inch bore, you know, they're, they're for the Chevy, they're for the Chevy truck axle, which is half inch. These ones, uh, this shaft coming out of here is 370, 370, so I have to probably drill 350, and then I'll have to run a, a bore in there to get me to... 370 uh, but yeah I did these on a on a on a, a forging uh, 
coal fire today with a, a smaller crucible. I did two. I got one in the lathe right now. Just kind of machining it, getting it ready to uh, punch the hole. Put my thread in the end so I can bolt these ones. Bolt these ones to it. They're good. These. I love these tires. I'm going to stick them on here so you can kind of see what they look like. Now, that front straight axle, just so everybody is aware, the other 34 coupe that is sitting up on the shelf, uh, so it was 12 inches. It was 12 inches, and then when you add the spindles, uh, I think I gained probably a half inch on each side, so which made it 13, and then when you put your wheels on it, you know, you're probably... 15, 15 inches. These are not going to be this tight to the frame. These are going to be out from the frame. Roughly, I'm going to say half an inch to three quarters of an inch. But I made this axle an inch wider and then the spindles stick out a bit more because that particular car, I find the front end I find the front end to be a little, a little narrow, so I kind of wanted to widen out the front end to make these tires on the front kind of center of the rear tires. It just, it, it just, it, it's an appearance. It's an appearance thing. It's an appearance thing. When these are in too far, kind of to me, it kind of looks weird. So. That's why I made this ax straight axle an inch wider. And overall, overall, so far what I've got going on here, you know, obviously we can't we can't can't roll it with those ones. Well, and maybe we can. Maybe we can. Yeah, they're a little sloppy. Until we get the wheel hubs finished. And we get some shock absorbers, we get the leaf spring done. But uh I think it's pretty bitchin' looking, and all this steel stuff, all this steel, this is all uh, basically quarter round. I said it, damn it. I said it. I said it. But all this steel stuff, um, once it's all, all finished welded, the, the wishbones are done. I gotta do my rear ladder bars. Gonna finish welding those. I'm gonna strip it all down, and all that stuff is gonna get powder chrome, and it should look uh, should look pretty awesome. I would love to powder chrome the frame, but unfortunately, if I was to do the frame because of its length, because of its overall length, 35 inches, it doesn't quite fit. And a full size, I have a stove. I have a full size stove that I have baked parts in upstairs that I was going to bring down here, but I already know that that frame is not going to fit in that stove. Because uh, I did some parts. I did some 30 inch parts and they just barely fit in the stove. I had to do the whole you know, cor corner to corner type thing and the door was, the door was still sticking open like a half an inch, but I just cranked the heat. Just, you know, 400 degrees, a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, so there you have it, man. This thing is, it's moving along. I, I kind of pick at it. Uh, picked at it a little bit today. You know, all this stuff, all this stuff, these, these little angle brackets that are kind of bent, drilled, tapped, fastened to the I-beam. You know, bending this this quarter rod, and then uh, what I do with the quarter rod is I slot it with the zip cut so that I can slide it over my brackets, get a good tack weld. Um, the wishbones, the hind joints, they're five millimeter. Uh, they're a little big, they're a little big, but hey, it's quarter scale. They, I think they suit it. Uh, I I took a 5M 
you know, stainless bolt. I was going to take the quarter rod, but to, to put the threads on the quarter rod, I have to put it in the lathe and I got to take about 30 thou off of it so I can uh, run the die over it and put threads on it. That's actually what I did with the, with the rear ladder bars. The front ones, I kind of got a little more creative and I was like, ah, I could just take a bolt. I could just take a bolt, tack weld it, you know, to the loop on the wishbone and put the hind joint on it. And that was, that was, that was so much easier than, you know, uh, doing some lathe work, running a die over it. Uh, probably could have did the same thing on these back ladder bars, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, I can't wait to get my new body molds for the 34. That'll be upcoming. But I can't wait to get the new body molds off of that body so I can pull uh, another 34 body that actually fits this, you know, that I can set on here because this one's going to sit so low I might actually have to chop a couple won't be much but it'll be a little bit off the back of this frame to get the back of the car kind of to sit over it I'm going to hang it low I'm going to hang it low you wait till you see this thing this thing is going to be just crazy wild looking we'll put one of my uh one of my fakey motors up front and and I got some crazy ideas for one of them fakey motors up front in this thing, you know. And hopefully the four stroke weed eater motor that I have will power this. I'm sure it will. Uh, but you never know. So little update on it. Right, next video. Next video, you know. Next video could be some airbrushing. I still gotta, still gotta do something with this. The old Chevy pickup. I gotta butter it up. I gotta sand it down. I gotta prime it. I gotta wanna repaint it. I wanna do some airbrushing on it. Um, but you know how it goes. You know how it goes. I don't live my life. Well, yeah, maybe I do. I love the quarter scale stuff. It's not my bread and butter. Let's just put it that way. Okay? We had that, uh, that big old purple, that big old purple truck. We had that back in here. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think. Because uh, we took out that electric water pump, we put in a manual water pump so that we get some heat pumping into the heater and, you know, we take on stuff like that and that puts everything else, you know, we do jobs like that and that puts everything else at a halt. And, uh, but you got to do what you got to do. So there you have it. It's not always fun in games. Sharp Customs. Share, like, subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Love you all. Peace. I'm out.